We've come a long way from this to this. Hello everyone and welcome to DIY in 5. The show where we give you life hacks to make your tech life a little simpler. My name is Trisha Hirschberger, and in the next two episodes, we are covering Android video production, specifically the simple things you need to do to up your Android mobile video shooting skills. Whether you're an aspiring cinematographer, blogging on the go, or live streaming directly to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, etc., there is no fixing it in post. So let's make sure you've got everything figured out before you go live. If these tips help you, please hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any more sweet, sweet tech life hacks. The first thing you'll want to upgrade is the steadiness of your shot. When holding a phone camera, there's a pretty good chance of movement via shaking hands, natural breathing, arm fatigue, etc. So let's take that right out of the equation. If you want a locked off shot, say for an interview, you can grab a simple lightweight tripod with a smartphone clip, like these that we have here. This tripod comes with a carrying case and extends as high as 50 inches with the ability to pan and tilt, and it even has a built-in balance. This smartphone clip extends to fit almost any size phone, but be careful not to catch any volume or power buttons when you place your smartphone in the clip, or your phone may take on a mind of its own. Both of these are available on Amazon for around $15 and $5 respectively. Not bad. Now, if you want to move around while you're recording, but still want the look of a steady shot, some Android phones come with pretty decent image stabilization. OIS, or optical image stabilization, tries to fix movement blur in real time by varying the optical path to the sensor. Digital image stabilization adjusts the image from frame to frame, attempting to counteract the motion. Both of these solutions are hit or miss. You may see some warping or otherwise unrealistic looking footage, and it also cuts down on how much you can capture in the shot. Here is a shot with image stabilization turned on, and here is a shot with it off. Now here's what it looks like in action. This is an example of image stabilization on a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. If you don't want to rely on built-in image stabilization, but are hell-bent on getting professional-looking smooth shots, you're in luck. There are now motorized stabilizers for digital phones, but they will run you a pretty penny, and by that I mean a few hundred dollars. There are less expensive weighted phone stabilizers out there, like a Steadicam rig for your phone, but most of them are incredibly awkward to use and the footage turns out just okay. For the smoothest shot possible, I really like the DJI Osmo Mobile. It makes walking shots super easy, plus it has controls on the handle for you to pan and tilt like a pro. It comes with a stand in case you want to put it down and do a locked off shot. And it also has a recording app that will let you follow a subject as well. Watch me now, no hands. Okay, now that you've got a smooth, steady shot, you'll have to determine how much you want to see in the camera's frame. At arm's length, it might be hard to capture everything you want your audience to see, or you may accidentally move yourself out of frame and cut off half your face. <laughs> Whoops! An easy way to work around this is to get a wide angle shot. Some Android phones have a built-in wide angle mode. LG V20 and V30 do this incredibly well, and I wish every phone manufacturer would make this a priority because it makes filming so much easier. They even incorporate it on the front facing cam so that you can see what you're shooting. Thank you! For other manufacturers that don't see this as a priority, or that do a poor job of it via software, <coughs> Samsung, <coughs> there are clip-on lenses, wide, macro, etc., available for smartphones. Now these vary greatly in price and quality, so do your research before pulling the trigger. The Beto set that we have here includes multiple lenses, a clip that's compatible with multiple phones, a lens carrying case, remote shutter, and attachable light all for about $25. Speaking of lighting, good lighting is hard to find and can really make your video look professional, or not if it's done wrong. I'm actually not a fan of small condensed clip-on lights like the one I just mentioned in the kit, because the light source comes from one side only and can look very harsh. If you can use existing lighting, natural or otherwise, and position the light source behind your phone, that's the best way to go. If the available lighting leaves too much to be desired, then clipping on a ring light might be your best bet. 
Ring lights are small and portable for easy on-the-go filming, and some even have different brightness and temperature settings to really perfect your look. These accessories also vary quite a bit in price point and design. For example, this UB size kit gives you the widest variety of settings and comes with a simple mount for your phone, but can be a lot to carry around since it needs to be plugged into a USB source. So you'll most likely be lugging around a laptop or tethered to an outlet. Now this smaller clip-on ring light is easier to carry, but offers fewer color options and is powered via rechargeable battery. So make sure that you have enough juice to get you through the shoot. Both options cost under 20 buckaroos. So there we have it. Super professional looking footage, all recorded from a smartphone. But we're only halfway there. What about perhaps the hardest part of videography with your smartphone? Getting good audio? Never fear my vlogging slash live streaming slash on the go friends. We'll be back with part two of filming from your Android phone to cover all the latest audio solutions, portable power, and more. I'm Trisha Hirschberger and you've been watching DIY in 5. See you next time.